Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, y'all, this is Tina Hobbs. Hello, this is Pastor Clinton Terry from Promised Man Church Ministry. This is Roy Zinius Hudson. 
Hello, I'm Michelle Edmonds. Hi, this is Anita Gerard Roberts. This is Calvin Logan, host of the Logan Power Show. This is Minister Cornell Sean Gregg of the New Antioch Baptist Church. Hello, I am Rhonda Bello. This is Cindy Williams, and you are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and welcome to Positive Power 21.org. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power, 21? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I am Jerry Lewis Live. I am blessed. I am worldwide. In Philippians 4, 6 7, say, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. And let everyone see that you are unselfish and considering all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs, and don't forget to thank Him for His answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than a human mind can understand His peace. We're on iTunes. Tune in. PositivePower21.org and Spreaker Radio. And don't forget... You can find us on Robin Lynn Production. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? And don't forget John 14, 6, New International Version. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Welcome to Positive Power, everybody. It's great to be back. Jerry Royce Live. Of course, you guys have been listening to me on my, on my new show called International Podcasting Magazine, where we have an opportunity to talk to advocates who are podcasting worldwide. That's right. They come right here on this show, let you know what they're doing, what they are doing for the Lord. That's right. That's what it's all about. They're real people doing real things, and you'll find them on International Podcasting Magazine. But this gentleman I have now, he's a real man doing real things. But I wanted to bring him on Positive Power 21.org. His name is Kendall Charles Lumpkin. He's known as the Barbershop Preacher. 30 year old Kendall Charles Lumpkin is a Columbia and Mississippi native who has served as a youth leader and minister at West Point Baptist Church in Hattiesburg, Pennsylvania since 2013. He's the barbershop preacher who took the Internet by storm on January 29, 2016, with his viral video that showed him sitting in a Mississippi barbershop ministering to an NFL football player. This Columbia, Mississippi native shared his testimony about his commitment to God and his wife, as well as the evolution from fighting temptation to fighting the good fight of faith. The video has been shared, liked, and viewed on social media sites more than 10 million times, not to mention the millions of comments. He has an opportunity to spread his story of failure and triumph through his upcoming book called Wreck But Not Total. Respect to his stores online May 2016. Had to get that plug in, Kenda. I know I, I know I told you to do it, but I wanted to do it. <laughs> anyway, welcome, Kenda. How you doing, brother? Welcome to Power. Man, I'm doing good, man. Glad to, glad to be a part of this, man. Thank you for having me. Hey, man, you actually my first show, man, for 2016, man. Just, I don't know. I was, I was on the road since 4.30. <laughs> got home, got in the studio. I said, shoot, let me start the program up now. Stop waiting around. So welcome, man. I appreciate having you. I appreciate Brother Charles introducing you, and we're just so excited to hear your story, man. Um, one thing that, that, that dominates the airways of Positive Power 21.org is, is the ladies, the Christian ladies. They dominate my airways. My boy, my, my man, Elder Ernest Richards, he tries hard to, to crash their shows and, and get the brothers, you know, the brothers a little something, something. Me and Charles inspired and trying to do our best to fill the airways on positive power with some with some um you know some brothers and i'm glad that he introduced you man so welcome to the show man i can't wait to talk to you man you ready man i'm ready man glad to be here man thank you all right brother so the first question coming out of the gates and we've been doing this for three years kendall who is kendall charles lumpkins the barbershop preacher Oh man, so man, I'm a just I'm I'm a humble man, man. Just uh, got a man after own, God own heart, really. It's just you know, young man from Columbia, Mississippi, was raised there. Um, 
And my biggest desire in this world, man, is just to uh, show people how real God is through my testimony and through my life as I follow him every day. Uh, married, my wife's name is uh, Kim Lumpkins. Got a daughter, Alana Lumpkins, and my son is Makai Lumpkins. You know, so that's what it's all about, man. I'm a husband, father, servant, trying to do my best to inspire this world, man. Amen, amen. And if you don't mind sharing, man, what, what do you do for a living, man? What, what keeps the food on the table and the proof, the water off your head? So right, so right now, man, I'm uh, I work offshore uh, with the company Share Oil Company, and I'm a safety representative for that company. So I I'm away 14 days at a time, so I work a 14 and 14 rotation. And whenever I come out here, man, it's any, anywhere dealing with you know personal behaviors, personal safety. Uh, process safety type thing, just, you know, making sure people go home the same way they came is the is the gist of my job. So passionate about that also, man. That's right. That's right. And, man, 14 days, man, that's almost that's similar to a firefighter, man. He has to go to the firehouse, and he's in there two weeks straight sometime. Maybe, well, 10 days. I think they say 10 days on and 10 days off, something like that. Kind of similar situation. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So why do they do it like that, Kendall? Why do they do, you know, safety people that way, you know, have them away from home for so long? So so it's not just safety people. Like you have uh, you have all different type of uh, crafts that work out here, and this is just a rotation. And I'm not sure where the schedule came from. Uh, it was a 7-7 seven and seven rotation at one time, but the reason why it's 14 and 14 now is because you fly a helicopter about 45 minutes out. And uh, it helps keep down costs if you keep people out here, like, for 14 days at a time. There are some locations where they work 21 days at a time, 21 and 21. And if you go overseas, they have locations where you work uh, 28 and 28. So it's just, wow. uh, you know, with getting people back and forth. Because if you flew everybody in every day, man, people, you'll never get any work done. Yeah, I understand. Okay, man, I always wanted to fly in a helicopter, man. That's on my list. <laughs> I guess it's not a not that exciting you get to do it every 14 days, huh? Nah, man, I'm ready to stop doing it. So, <laughs> so nah, it's not all that exciting like that, man. But, you know, that's just one of the part one of the job, part of the job that come with it. So we roll it. Yeah, yeah. It almost reminds me of being like a National Guardsman, man. You know, you go away every summer for what, what you guys go on for like 30 days at a time, mm-hmm. sometimes longer. And you get back, you know, you expect everything to be in place. That's a blessing, man. And I had an opportunity to catch your video, the one that went viral, the one where you was in the barber shop. I mean, you was throwing it down, man. I guess you, I guess you was, were you were feeling the Holy Spirit. It was just something that was just bottled up, ready to get out. And that guy just happened to been the one that was in the way. So it was amazing how it all happened because you know, if anybody know anything about a barber shop, man, you never go to a barber shop without calling and making an appointment first because you'll be there all day. So this day, and the guy that cuts my hair, Dante Jefferson, man, I'm always calling him, look, man, you know, put me down. I'll be there such and such time. This day it was just something different. I just happened to show up. So um, the conversation they was having, they was having it before I uh, was even engaged with it. I was actually on my phone, and they was talking about relationships, and the guy, Jarrell Poe, was actually in there, um, you know, just climbing around with a young lady in there. And then he got to me and he said, well, Kendall, what do you think about love? And then that's whenever it happened. But whenever I look back at the video, I said, man, I don't know what took me to that point. Well, I mean, I know it was God that took me to that point. But, like, in my mind, I didn't even realize that I was doing that. I didn't realize that I was having that type of conversation with him. And then one thing that I did hear, one of the guys was saying, man, this is good. I need to record this. But I had already been talking to the brother for, like, ten minutes already. And I heard him say that, but I didn't think nothing of it. But I'm so focused on, you know, trying to, you know, share some share some wisdom with this young brother. And um, it just happened, man. So, I mean, I know it was God that led it. I know it was God that, uh, you know, that was speaking through me that day. Mm-hmm. And, and, that, and you said that young man um, is actually playing a pro football. He's with the NFL. And I'm not sure how long he's been playing, but I, I think you mentioned to me earlier he played for two two teams. And uh, he just happened to have been, and he's a native of Mississippi, correct? Right, right. So he's uh, he plays for the Washington Redskins right now, and he uh, he's a native uh, from Waynesboro, Mississippi. So, you know, I knew him. I saw him in passing. 
you know, I've talked to him a few times on a few occasions, but it's just like after that, you know, I've been keeping, you know, keeping a relationship with him. And he just happened to walk in that day. You know, I didn't expect him to come in, didn't know he was going to come. So, you know, mm-hmm. we just – and he was on his way out the door whenever that all happened because he had just got out of the chair and, had, and getting a haircut. So, Wow, wow. And I happened – I actually caught uh, a Facebook post you did on Facebook Live that was awesome too, man. I mean, you was giving up a testimony about the birth of your son, which your wife was going through, and – and I think you were on the phone, not sure where you were at the time, but she had to make a move, and she made the right decision. Tell us a little bit about, about that that post. Yeah, so, man, it was, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm always trying to encourage people, so that was the biggest thing, and I was led to do that. That was actually a couple of days ago. So what happened is um, I was working offshore at the time, man, July 2014, and my wife, any normal day, she leaving church. It was 8 o'clock in the morning, and she said, uh, she sent me a text message. It was like, I'm not feeling well, so I'm going to go to the doctor and uh, just get myself checked because I hadn't felt my cop move. And I was like, okay, baby, just let me know what they say. So within two hours, man, of her saying that, her mom had done started texting in a group text and said, they're going to have to take uh, Makai because Kim is sick and her blood pressure is over. 200 so i'm like mm. what she's six months she was fine before she left the house but we thought she was fine but the doctor even said her face had swollen up and her lips were swollen everything but she mm. you know looking at yourself you don't notice that she didn't notice right. it she just thought that she was just pregnant she just thought she was you know bigger than normal so uh long story short man it just went from there and um i can remember man getting off that helicopter you know, and just thinking, talking to God, like, man, God, if you are who you say you are, save my family. So um, my son stayed in the hospital for 85 days. Uh, wow. We were going up and down, you know, to the hospital every night, seeing and there were nights where I would stay there and my wife would stay there, um, you know, just praying and praying and having a church family like I have and a bunch of friends mm-hmm. surrounding me, uh, just making sure that they keep us covered in prayer, man. And it was, you know, it was a step-by-step process. God was building my faith through the entire process, man, you know, from, you know, doctors saying he got a disease and I'm not a disease, but he had a uh, infection. And then three mm-hmm. days later, you know, they turn around after prayer and telling my wife, look, my son don't have no infection. You know, the doctor come back and say, uh, Mr. Lumpkins, it had to be something wrong with the test because we couldn't find anything. So it just, mm-hmm. you know, he was shaping me and molding me for this, you know, for things like this now. So, um, my wife, man, if you was to see her now, you wouldn't know she's actually healthier than she's ever been, works out more than I do now. My son will be two in July, mm-hmm. and he's a, a man, a miracle, man. Whenever I tell you I saw something for the first time in my life that I didn't never think I would see, and God showed me in that how powerful he was. You know, you hear about mm-hmm. people's testimony. You hear about things and saying what they saw God do, but I had to go through that for myself to actually experience the power of God in that moment. And it was yeah. it was good for me, you know. You know, mm-hmm. why you going through it, man? You don't want to go through it. You wish it was different. But when you come mm-hmm. out, you understand why you went through that. That's right. That's right. He, and he may show you two or three of his miracles if you're still not a believer. You know, you're still not giving him the glory. He may come back at you again. You know, right. wow, that that was that was powerful. I, mean, I was really feeling that man when I was listening to you, and I said, "Wow, you know, it's a miracle anyway, just to have children, because you hear about people all the time trying and trying and can't have children, and then they, you know, they sitting there on the side of that bed crying, saying, you know, you you hear about teenagers who have unwanted, unplanned pregnancies all the time, and you say, here we are, a couple, believing him, and and you're having a hard time, you just wonder why, you know, and. And he, he and like you mentioned there, he he does that for a reason. Yeah, so reason. that and and that's why that's why it's so amazing, man. That's why the Bible is so powerful. And you know, I I, I see the principles. I I see what the Lord was doing. I see why He wrote it, man. Because this is our instruction for life. Like, why would anybody just think about it? Why would anybody in their right mind count it joy when they fall into trials? Why? What what sense does that make? But the reason why you're joyful about going through is because what you gain when you come out on the other side. So I'm mm-hmm. so much better now as a man, as a believer, as a husband, as a, as a, as a father, as a minister, as a servant now, before I was July the 6th, 2014, two years ago. Mm-hmm. 
Amen. But if, what kind but, of man? What kind of what, man? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead Ken. Now I was going to say, tell me yeah, what kind so, of man were you before that happened? So, so I was a I was a faithful man before that. But I'm just saying, God takes you to different levels with your walk. You know, now now I'm more mature. Now I'm a much better man. Now, if you're talking about five or six years ago, <laughs> then, you know, we talk about a whole other thing. Well, I went from, you know, running the streets, man. I, I was addicted to gambling, addicted to, you know, sex and things of that nature, man. So um, thinking that that was the way to live because that's what I saw. I saw that so much. I'm thinking that this is what a man should be until mm-hmm. God really showed me, like, him that, you know, everything that you're doing is leading to destruction. That's right. That's right. So when, when you met Kim... Cause you, your wife, your wife is named Kim, right? That's her name. Yeah, right, right. What, what, what were you like when you met Kim? Did she slow you down, or what was going on then when you met her? So, so she didn't. She, I don't say she, I don't say she slowed me down because I was already in a transition. Like I was, you know, tired of relationships, jumping in and out of relationships, tired of just saying, you know, we we're dating and nothing comes of it. So whenever mm-hmm. I met her, crazy story, man. Like I was the guy. I had been in relationships with women for three years and never really talked about seriously talking about marriage. Whenever I met my wife and, you know, I'm trying to be a playboy, man, talking to all different types of women. But whenever I met my wife, I told my homeboy, I said, man, look, I'm going to marry this woman. I met her March the 24th, mm-hmm. April the 5th. I told him that two weeks later. And he said, man, you lying. You crazy. Cause I know you. That's what he said. He said, man, I know you, man. You just talking, you just emotional right now. I said, man, this is the reason, this is the woman I'm going to marry. And when people ask me that now, looking back three years later, because April the 6th, it'll be three years that we've been married. They say, well, Kendall, what changed? What was different? And I said, I was different because Mm -hmm. I was ready. And God brought the right woman at the right time when I was ready. The right woman that was going to love me the way that I needed to be loved and the the woman that I needed to love the way she needed to be loved. (laughs) <laughs> because it was all about me. And I tell men that all the time. Like, y'all be thinking, men think they're going to find this woman that just going to be falling out the sky. You're going to get X, Y, and Z. Man, when you're ready, God is going to answer. That's right. That's and right. it don't take you 20 years to know you want to marry somebody. It doesn't. <laughs> that is the truth, man. All right, we're talking to Kendall Charles Lumpkins. He's known as the barbershop preacher. He's the internet sensation man of God, and we're going to take a quick break, Kendall. We're going to come back, and we're going to hear some more of your story, man, your walk with God, and we're going to listen to another tune from Angel Sessions. You heard the great I Am opening up the show, and another one of my favorites, and you hear this on Transformation Lives with, with Pastor V on Thursdays. That's right at 8 o'clock right here on Positive Power 21.0 on FCCHD. That's right, the, the, the show you're listening to right now. So we're going to check it out. We're going to listen and listen. Stay tuned.
Right, you listen to Jerry Woods Live Worldwide Podcast, and tonight we're talking to Ken Dale, Charles Lumpkins, and we want to say congratulations to Angel Sessions. She hit about 1.2 million. That's right, 1.2 million plays on SoundCloud, and she hit like number six on the R&B Soul Charts. That's right out there on the West Coast. And that song is doing all that damage. It's called Feed My Sheep. That's on her new album. And I always forget the name of the album. I think it's called, um, some, well, I bet I, I bet I do that. <laughs> I'm going to wait till I get the title of it. Because I actually have the T-shirt. I thought I had it down here in my studio, but I didn't. But check it out at Billboard Music Store. You want to get some Angel Session products, some music, check it out. She's a beautiful person. She, she engages her, her fans. Um, if any worries, any concerns, she will, she, will, she will engage you. Check her out. And her website is angelsessions.com. All right? And we appreciate you guys locking it down with us. We want to have a shout-out to Pastor V, Pastor Virginia Singleton, her new show called Transforming Lives. Radio Bible Show right here on Positive Power 21.0 every Thursday, 8 o'clock. You catch it on demand on iTunes and Spreaker Radio. You can catch us on Spreaker Radio 24-7. You got iGospel Music streaming 24-7 right out of Florida with Pastor Keith Ron Powell and his beautiful, beautiful wife, uh, Mrs. Powell. That's right. Check them out. Check them out. The CEOs. And also we want to thank Elations Radio. Elations Magazine is right around the corner for being published, y'all. That's right. It'll be coming out really, really soon. We're all excited around here. And also don't forget about Storm Talk 365, Vibes Live. Also Robin in Production got a brand new TV internet show that's streaming on her network. So Google Robin in Production and you will find out how to get to that network. They be running jazz on the weekends. Yeah, I was checking them out. It was awesome. Awesome. All right, so right now we're talking to Kendall Charles Lumpkin. His plug is he got a brand new book coming out, and he, he's here to talk about it. All right, Kendall, tell us about your new book, brother. Yeah, man. So, um, man, let me let me run this down to you before uh, before I tell you about the whole book, man. So this is what's, okay. what's so amazing. So, uh, I started writing a book. This was some years ago, but I told my dad that I wanted to write a book when I was 15 years old, but I had no idea what I wanted to write it for. So it was like, okay, well, you know, I saw people doing it and I thought it was something cool to do. So I'm <laughs> like, you know, if I write a book, I'll be popular. But right. I, w- I wrote the book 
when God gave me a message and I was ready to give him the glory with it. Mm. So whenever my yeah. perspective changed, that's whenever everything started to flow. Mm. But as long as I was trying to do worldly things, I was trying to do it for the world, it was like, no, nah, you're not ready yet yeah. because you're going to get this and think it's about you. But I'm doing mm-hmm. this so other people will see me. That's right. That's right. So, man, just uh, yeah. the whole title, man, wreck, wreck but not totaled. And it was so amazing how this all happened. I was telling my wife, uh, so I was struggling last, last year in October. I was struggling with a title. So I go in my office. No, I was struggling with, with, the, with the, uh, the chapters in the book, but I had a title. So I had a title, Wreck But Not Total. That come to me, I was like, man, that's going to be good because I had a wreck and, I, and a deer hit me. So what happened was my first mind, I'm like, man, I hope this vehicle is totaled. You know, mm-hmm. get another vehicle. You know, that's, that's what right. you think. And then in that moment, it was like Wreck But Not Total. But you do something different with it because – that's the same way we are. We are we're wrecked. We're a mess. But God does not total you out and say, give me another one. He said, I want to use that one that's wrecked. I want to use that one that has all the mistakes. I want to use that same guy that used to do that same stuff five or six years ago so people yeah. will know how powerful I am. That's right. So, mm. so the whole idea, man, it was like I'm struggling with getting the chapters down, but I got the title, and this is what's so amazing. So I go in my office, and I have a notebook that has a layout of chapters but no title. Mm -hmm. And every chapter was consistent with the title. And I did that two years prior to this. That's how he works. So I I wrote the chapters out two years before he gave me the title, and whenever I needed the chapters, I went back and got it because he gave me the title. Glory. Mm. And the subtitle of it is uh, God Has the Final Say-So, man. And then, and I was telling a friend of mine earlier, man, I'm willing to bet. This is why I really, really think it's so amazing or so powerful, that, so important that people get their hands on this book because I really believe that 75% of the population in the world, not just America, I'm talking about in the world, have mm. given up on their dreams, have given up on life, thinking that they have to settle for less because they made some mistakes. But that's Mm -hmm. not how God sees us. Because if you remember the prodigal son in the Bible, when the prodigal son was on his way back to his dad, he said, he said, surely my dad has hired servants, and I could go work and be just a hired servant. But his daddy saw him and said, I want to get, no, kill the fatted calf, kill the best calf we got. Here's a robe. Here's his ring. So what I'm saying is that even though you made all those mistakes, God's future for you is stays the same. You just have to go back to him. That's right. And that's the whole idea behind wreck but not total. Like, we need to start forgiving ourselves. We need to start seeing us for who God sees us for. Yeah, we done made some mistakes. Yeah, some accountability that has to go with that. But at the end of the day, if in Jeremiah, that's true what God says in your mother's womb, I form you. So that means before I ever made any mistakes, you knew me. And God does not change his mind about me. God didn't change his mind about anybody just because they made mistakes. Awesome. That's how God works. Kendall, he just he just do us like that, man. I recall the same situation, man. But it's your yeah, show man, tonight, so, man. Your show. Yeah. So the barber the barbershop preacher now now, you got this reputation now. And and you can't you can't shake it now, Kim. It's all yours. Now, what do you, what do they call you? What do they call you around around the, around the company on those fourteen days, man? When you when you walk in the the plant, what do they call man, you? Man, so so the so the whole idea behind the barbershop preacher, man, it was a name uh, my publicist and I was talking, and she was just like, you know, just run with it. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. it's a media thing. Um, you know, people know that they they would identify you with that name because nobody. Like, other places in the world don't know me. But, man, whenever they see me, man, I tell all my friends, man, I'm still Kendale. Like, call me Kendale. I know you're going to, you know, they'll try to associate with the title. But I'm not, I'm not real big on titles because, you know, the highest title you can have is a servant as it relates mm-hmm. to God. So, 
That's yeah. what I want people to call me, man. I'm just a servant of God trying to do my part, being me, being who I was created to be. And the biggest testimony in that whole situation with, you know, millions of views that happen to be on that video is that when you're being yourself and not trying to be someone else, that's whenever God really wants to use you. That's right. So, it's like so I'm not trying to be anybody else. Yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to be, you know, the barbershop preacher. That's just a name that, you know, people identify me with the video. But who I am, I'm Kendall, man. I'm the same guy. This is who mm-hmm. I am. I'm going to always be this way. Uh, just a few people know my name now, and God giving me influence with a bigger, a bigger crowd or bigger people, and and it's just a blessing to even be able to have an impact on people's lives, man. So that's just me. Yeah, I don't man, let all that man. stuff go to my head or nothing, man. Well, I think I think you chose the right person because you know anybody else probably would take their barbershop preach and and they have a nickname call me BP. <laughs> nah, man. You know. Nah, <laughs> man. So. It's, it's it's crazy, man. You know, it's like you know, and I and I know that type of stuff. But you know, even if that type of stuff tries to rise up in us, you know, we still have to maintain who we really are. Yeah, um, whenever, even right. when people that's call, right. you know, they call you by that, you always be humble and make sure you know, you know, who you are oh, and man. what you stand for. Oh, man. And you think about it, you know, Kendra, you know, God made a lot of us just so different, man. You know, but we we do have to remember, you know, why we do what we do, you know, it's for his glory. And I remember I was, I was listening to somebody say the same thing, you know, you know stay humble. And you, you know, you got some people that's really out there. But I said, but he built a lot of those people like that for his purpose, you know. And he's they, mm-hmm. his cheerleaders. I call them his cheerleaders, you know. And I know sometimes I can, I can get carried away and have a ball with this thing and have so much fun. But I used to have fun. Well, at least I thought I was having fun when I was on the other side of the fence, but I'm having a lot more fun now talking to guys like you, you know, spreading his glory, and people have an opportunity to, to learn about other guys in God's camp, saving souls, because there's some people hurting out there, man, and they got to hear guys like you give your testimony because they think it's over. Some people think, mm-hmm. oh, they threw in the towel, man. They already threw the towel. Some of them guys gave up when they was in middle school. Right. You know, they they didn't think it was going to live to be 18. Now, they t- you hear that all the time. Oh, I didn't know I was going to live to be 18 or 21. And see, and, 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 that, and, that's, you know? and that's the biggest thing, man, because, see, what what we have to really understand is that God has given us influence, and he gives you those gifts to glorify him. And, man, there are a lot of people, and I'm not calling names, I'm not knocking anybody, but there are a lot of people that are popular I'm talking about got millions of followers, Mm -hmm. but they could care less about the followers. They could care less Mm -hmm. about the people. And with me, man, I care about people because I know people are hurting. Like after that video, man, you would not believe how many, I'm talking about hundreds of people on my inbox, and I make sure I take time to respond to these people and deal with their situations and help them in any Mm -hmm. way that I can because I don't want, you know, don't look at me like I'm some superstar. Don't look at me like I'm some famous person, man. Look at me like I'm just like you because whenever you see me as a superstar, you think that is not attainable. But if you identify with me as a man that God can do something just like he did it for Kendall, then it's all possible for you because you don't look at me any different. Like I don't see the people on TV any different than me. They just had a different opportunity. Somebody gave them a different gift and, uh, gift of stage to be on. But other than that, those are normal people to me. That's right. That's right. Amen. Well, man, you know, I, I, I must say you're doing a great job, man, holding it down. You know, that, and that's how God built you. You know, you know what you went through. You, you know who you were. You know who you are now. You know, you got your queen. You got your, you know, your, your, your little girl, your little boy. A family man, you know, you're holding down a great job, and I'm sure the people in the job really respect you too, man. They're glad you're there. 14 days, you know, you need somebody there, man, that's going to bring some inspiration, man. I know they love talking to you and being around you, man. That's that's glory right there, man. So congratulations to you, Appreciate Kendall, and that, I wish man. you a great success with the book. And we got to have you back, man, when you release the book, man. Got to have you back. And uh, cause we got a lot going on with this network, and I'm sure they're gonna want to pass you around. Um, one of my um, one of the CEOs of our, our TV station we're working with just inboxed me today saying they're looking for uh, some single young men, looking for some men period to start um, producing some shows for our, for our brothers, 
to tune into, and um, I'm hoping you're one of the guys that could be part of that, you know, help them out a little bit. I know you're a busy man, but um, I'm sure God uh, has shown you this path for a reason, and I'm glad Charles introduced us, man. So we you know, we got great plans for you, man. We hope you'd be available that you can help us out right here at PositivePower21.org. Continue, you know, because this wasn't always uh, – a radio station that was for, you know, glorifying God, man. <laughs> we was we we was yeah. about the positivity, and, and, but you know Right, right. And see that and that's the thing, man, like say we have to build that foundation and you know, me being busy, man, yeah, you know, I'm busy but we can always work out days because I always got time for this. This is my life. Like this is what I do. I'm off showing a rig right now, man. Like, you know, if somebody could be inspired, somebody's life could change by what God gives me to share, man. That's what I'm all about. That's right, man. We got to get people excited about their talent and their gifts again, man. You'd be surprised how many people are just, just on the fence right now just thinking about ending it all, you know, jumping off their bridge, whatever. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. it takes a little podcast to change things. And then, you know, I told you earlier that how we, we stream into a lot of military bases, you know, overseas, man. You're talking about we probably the closest thing they can get the real radio, you know, because they got to listen right. to what's going on over there, and they get a chance to hear their people talking about the glory of God, you know, welcome Jesus. So, they, you know, they love it. And I, and I respect the numbers that we get, you know. It was, it was none of my doing. It was God. You know, he told us this is what he wanted us to do. So this is what we're doing. So we meeting guys like you, Charles Inspire, uh, his boy Terrell, Pastor Elder, the sisters that's on this podcast. I mean, I get inbox people. They was grateful that I became their friend. I was like, whoa, wow, really? It's like that. You know, you just don't know where that person was when you friend them. You know, some people right. take that thing really serious, you know. And I know you don't have that much room on your, on your friend list because I think you probably had to knock somebody off to, to bring a brother on board, right? <laughs> man, it's been crazy, man, since uh, – but, you know, people can always go on there and follow me, man, even on uh, Instagram. Uh, my first and last name, Kendall Charles, one word. Uh, on Twitter, it's Kendall Charles. Uh, so, yeah, man, uh, I'm, I'm available, man. So anybody need me, that's the way you can hit me up, find me. Um, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for what God is going to do, man. Amen, amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, we want to we want to give you an opportunity to give us your, your last final thoughts for tonight's show, and then uh, we'll be ending the broadcast. Tim Fool? Yes, sir. Uh, so, yeah, so for everybody listening, man, uh, just keep your head up. Like, for real, like God really, really has a plan for all of us. He created us all for a specific reason. And um, I just really appreciate all the opportunities that's coming because whenever you see me, it's going to always be about God. I'm always trying to inspire. I really believe I was called to encourage people, to encourage the world with the message, whatever God gives me. So uh, thank you for having me, uh, Jerry Royce Live. Uh, I'm sure we'll be back together. We're going to do work in the future, man. So I appreciate it, man. That's right, man. We're going to get you on with Charles. Charles, when Charles get on the show, man, that dude hype me up so much, man. It's so funny when, when we get together now. Terrell, I, I'm hoping that when the, three, when the four of us get on here together, they give you a chance to talk, man. Because that guy is something <laughs> else, man. You got, you got to love yourself. Some Charles, Inspire, and some Terrell Jenkins, yeah, man. man. Them brothers are something else. But we, we had a ball the other night, man. So we're going to have to all hook up. All of us going to have to hook up one day and do a big conference call. Of course, we probably had to allocate like an hour, maybe two hours, but we got to do that, man, all right? We're going to make that happen, okay? Cool, man. Just let me know, man. I'm, I'm around, man. Just let me know, man. Y'all be blessed. Amen, amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was Kendall Charles Lumpkin. L- listen out for his book. We will be promoting his book right here on Positive Power 21. That over Jerry Woods Live. And, again, look out for Elations Magazine coming out. Don't forget to listen to Elations Radio streams right here on demand on, on Spreaker Radio with Jerry Woods Live and Positive Power 21. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Jerry Woods Live. I'm worldwide. Thank you for tuning in to Jerry Voice Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live.
All right, that's a wrap.